Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope y'all are having an outstanding end to your summer. We're really looking forward to fall. There should be a lot of cool things happening. But unfortunately, not everybody is having a good end to their summer. Which begs the question, what do you get when you cross an extremely large ego, a complete detachment from any common sense, and the most venomous snake on the planet? You get this. Behind me is where Jeffrey Leibowitz was bit inside one of these homes last Friday. Many of his neighbors saying they barely knew him. Some saying the most interaction they had with him was through his Facebook snake videos and others alarmed to find out the venomous snakes had lived nearby. So we've had another episode in the reptile community. It's something that really needs to be discussed. I've got some things that we want to talk about as they pertain to non-reptile keepers and people that aren't familiar with snakes and see something like this. And then, of course, for keepers, breeders, educators, all of us, there's some things that we need to take into consideration that I haven't heard get a little, whole lot of airtime so far. So you won't want to go anywhere. we got a couple things to touch on today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Now, I was kind of on the fence about making this. I put my feelers out, and you know, some folks are saying, don't give it any more airtime. It doesn't deserve to be talked about. Other people are like, I'd really be interested to hear what your take is on this. So here we are. I've got a couple things that we're going to go over. A little housekeeping first. Of course, if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, get down, click that subscribe button. Because as of filming today, this is Friday the 13th, September. Uh, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern, we're going to be doing our regular live stream. After that, for our contributing Patreon members, we do a Zoom meetup where we can all get together and chat and show off, show off our animals and ask questions and share information. It's a really cool group of people, really knowledgeable. It's a lot of fun. So if you're interested in getting in on that, the Patreon link is always down in the description of the videos. Absolutely enjoy having everybody we can jump in there. Helps the channel a lot, and it's a lot of fun too. Uh, and then also after that, at 9.30 Eastern Saturday, Gary Tarpley from Constricted and Addicted, is going to be hosting a Reticulated Python Roundtable on his channel. It's going to be him, Nicole Tisdale, myself, Chris McVicker, and Lucas Bagnera. Um, all of us are just going to sit around, talk Reticulated Python stuff, have a great time. It uh, should be a great opportunity for folks to come in and ask questions. Really encourage everybody to be there. So definitely check that out. Again, I'll put the link in the description for that. And if you're watching this video after the fact, you can catch the video after the fact as well uh, but otherwise we'd like to see you guys live there tomorrow night as long as on our as well as on our live stream on saturday as well so i've kind of been on the fence like i said of putting this out or not decided i'm going to because when something like this happens it has a potential to be really bad for the reptile community as a whole and i, I want to show specifically how the media approaches it. I've got two newsreels here, and we'll show those without talking over it too much, but I want you to kind of pay attention to a couple of things as I, as I put these things in. One you're going to see that the media always does when it comes to reptiles and stuff is the shock value. Um, you know, you can tell the, the, the words that they use, the, the, the choice, of, choice of phrasing, the, the tone in their voice, um, always to make things a little bit more dramatic. That's what the media does. And they've also got a certain level of misinformation in there because we see this all the time when the media tries to cover something related to snakes. For instance, in this case, they're talking about the Inland Taipan, which is an Australian snake um, one, among the most venomous reptiles on the planet. And they're going into their stock file footage and posting pictures of ball pythons and Burmese pythons um, and using these things as a reference as they tell the story um, and we'll go into some of the reasons why those inaccuracies can be really harmful for us and also towards the end of one of the other clips you'll see where they talk about the disposition of the animals and that to me is about the saddest part of this um, 
because those animals don't deserve that kind of fate because they just happen to be with an irresponsible keeper. So those are things that we want to look at. As I run these clips, like I said, it's it's something that we need to acknowledge and and just discuss and come up with a game plan to kind of combat some of these things. So this is what they're saying about it down there. Police say a Florence man is somewhat better tonight after being bitten by one of his 14 snakes that he housed in his home. They say he is not out of the woods just yet. Officers say the man owned the reptile, some of which are among the world's most venomous snakes. ABC 15's Tanya Brown first reported the incident. She's live tonight from the Florence Police Department. Tanya. Jennifer, police say the man called 911 and told dispatchers that he'd been bitten by one of his snakes. Some have questioned if you can own such dangerous and venomous snakes in the city of Florence and the county, and the answer is you can. Police and game wardens removed 14 snakes last Friday from an apartment on West Marion at Harold Streets in Florence after the man who owned the snakes was bitten by one of them. Police say the man's family gave them the okay to humanely euthanize the reptiles. Officers tell me they seized rattlesnakes, a green mamba, gaboon vipers, cobras, and an inland taipan. A source says it was the inland taipan that bit the man. Several online publications say it's one of the world's most venomous snakes. I talked with the Clemson University wildlife biologist about the types of snakes removed from the man's home. All the snakes that he had in his home are definitely very venomous. Um, with all snakes in general, you always want to maintain a safe distance with them and only handle them if you are a professional. Some question how it can be legal to own such venomous creatures in the city and county of Florence. Neither have ordinances against owning them, but you are not allowed to resell, give away, or release the snakes into the wild. Police say they couldn't find a state ordinance against it either. The wildlife biologist tells me if you own or plan to get a pet snake that's extremely venomous, do your research. If you are keeping um, exotic snakes, obviously knowing about them and where they come from and everything like that, I think definitely is very important. Florence Police Captain Stephen Starling says Leibowitz contacted emergency medical services around 2 a.m. Friday morning at a Florence Flats home along Marion Street after being bit by the venomous inland taipan snake. Florence Police stepping in after Leibowitz's condition worsened. This is a picture of Steve Irwin holding a taipan snake in 2006. Starling says in Leibowitz's home, some of the snakes were in plastic storage containers, others in glass cages before being taken by DNR and the police. Starling says officers tried calling various public facilities that could handle the venomous snakes, but says none were able to take them. But unfortunately, they were not able to take them from us because of various health concerns that it could pose to their, their habitats they already have established. Um, so unfortunately, once we were able to get into the apartment, realize that the conditions for the snakes there really weren't habitable, from DNR's opinion and what we had gathered from some of the experts, uh, that they just it wasn't suitable to have them left there with the understanding that since we could not re rehome them with a professional facility, that they would be uh, humanely euthanized. Starling says there are no laws in the state of South Carolina that prohibit venomous snakes as pets. A viewer tipped off News 13 with a Facebook page believed to belong to Jeffrey Leibowitz. It shows videos and photos of him holding different sorts of snakes, some believed to be venomous. It's compelling video, but we're still waiting on permission from Leibowitz to show it. So just a couple quick points to make on those news stories. Uh, like we said going into it, I'm sure you kind of caught the tone and, you know, they always make this stuff seem dramatic and so forth. Uh, helps their viewership. Uh, it doesn't help us when we're looking at maintaining a realistic picture of what it's like for us to keep our animals. Now, one thing that bothers me that I'd really like to see these guys do differently is I wish these newscasters would put more effort into getting their facts straight. Um, they're showing pictures of a ball python and they're talking about an inland taipan. You couldn't get more polar opposite animals in every category than these two right here. Ball pythons, the infamous pet rocks, are about the safest animal that you can keep hands down, bar none. They're safer than your cat, safer than your dog, safer than your hamster, or your gerbil, or your rat. These are easily the safest pet you can keep. And they're showing pictures of that while they're discussing the absolute worst animal to keep. Um, 
that that does a couple things doesn't really do anything else for us experienced keepers except kind of makes us roll our eyes um, looking at how lazy the reporting is but I mean kind of think of it from the perspective of somebody that is not familiar with any of these animals at all and they're seeing that picture of a ball python which is pretty distinctive yeah they've got a pretty distinctive look to them so they're seeing that picture and they're hearing about this highly venomous animal and say for instance they walk into PetSmart to go get a leash for their dog never really looked at the reptiles and they turn around and they look down and they see a little ball python and they immediately associate that with the story that they heard and all it does is it intensifies their anxiety about these animals um, that, that just that occurs naturally you know I mean if you're already afraid of snakes and you hear that story and then you see one right there now you're terrified of it you're looking at the safest animal that you can probably keep, period, outside of a goldfish. And, um, and your anxiety level is, is, you know, at Taipan level. Um, so, so the misinformation that comes out like that, it's, it's never good. I mean, yeah, most people have got a working knowledge of animals. They've got some kind of understanding about it. But I would like to see the press do better about actually researching the stuff that they're talking about and putting the actual accurate information out there. Um, and another thing, of course, another concern is one of the first things that you hear is, is it legal? Should they be able to keep it? You know, all of that stuff, anytime something bad happens, it has the potential to instigate city commissions you know all these local political entities all the way up to you know federal laws um, somebody sees this they go okay well the bad things happen so we need to make a law to ban this it's something that all of us should think about in regards to our animals is look at the animals that you've got in your house and imagine how you would feel if something stupid happened and you found yourself on the five o'clock news and the entire reptile community is looking at you, face palming, going, God, not again. Um, so for all of us that keep reptiles, we need to keep that in mind. If my big reticulated python gets out and starts cruising around the neighborhood, there's going to be a reporter out there at some point. That's going to make that's going to make the news. Um, so I do what I need to do in order to secure her, make sure that she can't get out, make sure that she's safe, everybody else is safe. It's a win-win. We've all got to keep that stuff in the front of our mind with our animals because, you know, it's these things cannot happen. Um, they will come back to bite us in one way, shape, or form if we really don't start putting a concerted effort and to kind of police in our own community. And I know with this particular individual, a lot of people have approached him. A lot of people have, you know, have tried to say dude you really need to stop showing people this irresponsible behavior because they're just like anything else you know somebody goes online they see this some kid that's fascinated with rattlesnakes sees it and says oh well he does it i can do it i'm gonna go catch this rattlesnake and i'm gonna play with it just like this guy does he gets bit he gets hurt or worse and it's, it's just bad all the way around and I'm really familiar with this topic personally because I teach about reticulated pythons. This is the longest snake species on the planet. The one that I've got here is 17 feet long and 80 pounds. And reticulated pythons can be the absolute easiest snake in the world to work with. They can also be a sheer terror to work with. And it has 100% to do with that animal's past and the skill of the handler. Um, those two things make the difference between the easiest and the hardest. Uh, so it, it's really a double-edged sword when we're talking about them because I do talk about how easy they are to keep, how easy they are to take care of, with the caveat in there that, you know, it has to be done right. The keeper has to put the effort into learning the right things to do. we got to shelve our, shelve our egos and be humble enough to do what the animal tells us we've got to understand them we've got to be able to read them and really what we do is a hundred percent dependent on what they show us they get comfortable they learn to trust us piece of cake um, and that's the kind of relationships that we that we want to encourage with people that keep these animals uh, stuff like this when it hits a press 
never good. Um, it doesn't help at all. It's the same thing with Jay Brewer, the way he's always pissing off his retics and wanting to get him to fight and bite. And he thinks it's fun to get all the attention, you know, fighting a big 20 foot snake off of her eggs. Well, you get somebody that loves retics and, you know, they look at Jay and they think, oh, getting bit's not a big deal. Um, it can be. You know, Jay Brewer knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, he knows how to make the animal strike. He knows how to minimize the effects of it. Um, if you're a new keeper that hasn't been working with snakes for 30, 40 years, and you try that stuff with a 20-foot retic, it's going to hurt, uh, rest assured. The biggest one I've been bit by is a 16-footer. It was a really unpleasant experience. Um, but it's stuff like that that people just show because of their own egos. And we've got to, as a community, uh, like I said, really make a concerted effort to do everything we can. We don't have to be a jerk about it. We can, we can be as polite as humanly possible and just say, hey, man, this is not good. It's putting everybody in a bad light. Something bad happens. Something bad could happen. Something bad is likely to happen. Um, it's really going to affect all of us. And enough people do that. I've seen people change their minds. I've seen people change their behavior. We can help people get better. Um, over the last few years, I've really seen a lot of things change for the better. So I'm really optimistic. Uh, stuff like this doesn't have to go unaddressed. Um, you know, just we, we try and be as polite about it as we can, uh, but we need to be firm with the understanding that we don't want to encourage anybody to go on a crusade and start nitpicking over subjective things that are a little bit different. You know, this person has a little different opinion. You know, this substrate, that substrate. I'm right. They're wrong. I'm going to go tackle this person because I don't think they're doing the right thing. Uh, that's unacceptable. That doesn't do anything except make the entire community just a miserable place to be. Um, subjective stuff, yeah. Learn to respect other opinions. Don't go off on them. Something that's objectively wrong or dangerous, like stuff that you've seen this uh, Leibowitz joker doing, um, yeah, that's, a, that's objectively wrong. It's, it's bad. It's the worst practice. And he's just going out there and throwing that stuff out online, and we see what the result is. Um, it's not a big of a stretch to think that somebody could be watching him and try mimicking him and have even a worse outcome. So we do as a community, you know, we're a minority. Large constrictor, crocodilians, monitor lizards, venomous keepers. Uh, we are a minority in this country, we're a very small group. And in some places, we enjoy a lot of freedom with the animals that we keep. And it's really important that we continue to build each other up, work together, and, and try and keep everybody just as responsible as we can. You know, what you do with your own safety when you close the door in your own house is one thing. What you do in front of a camera and you push it out there in front of the world is an example, either to feed your ego or to make money. This is an entirely different thing. And it's, that's something that we really need to take into consideration before we put stuff out. And of course, the last point is the, what happens to the animals. Um, if you're doing something like this Leibowitz guy is doing, and you're talking about how much you care for your animals, how much you love them, and you know how good of a life you give them, or whatever the case may be, and you end up in the same situation, they couldn't find a home for them. Apparently the only place out there that was equipped to take that many venomous snakes had concerns about quarantine and the health of the collection that they had there already. They wouldn't take them. So all of this guy's animals had to be euthanized. So you're going to, out of one side of your mouth, talk about you know how much you love your animals, and et cetera, et cetera, and blah, 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 and look at me, and look at me. And you're going to keep doing stupid things until something happens, and every one of your animals is going to pay the price for it, and they're all going to get killed. So a really important thing to keep in mind there as well. Um, I, I, I'm a firm believer that anything bad can spawn positive results. Um, everything should be a learning experience. Um, 
and people have gotten a lot better at this. You know, for instance, in the snake groups, you see somebody out there who maybe this person has only ever owned a, owned a crested gecko before, and he jumps into a retake group and says, cool, I just got a 10-foot retick. I don't know anything about it. Somebody help me. Uh, our first knee-jerk reaction is, of course, again, to facepalm and go, what are you doing, man? How are you going to get into something like that not knowing anything about it? And there's a lot to be said for that. That's something that we need to be saying. Um, and we will all be the first ones when somebody says, I'm thinking about getting a retic. What do I feed it? And stop them right there and say, look, dude, you really need to take some time and learn about this animal before you get it. Uh, but once somebody has it, if somebody jumps into the group and he's like, I've got a 10-foot reticulated python here. I've got no idea what to do with it. Help me. The last thing we need to do to that person is chastise them and run them into the ground and beat them across the head and shoulders with our ego because we're so smart and they're so dumb and that person never asks another question. He goes away and he has a bad experience with that animal or that animal dies. <clears throat> we're complete, completely defeating the purpose of being a, a productive, cooperative community. Uh, somebody comes into a group like that, man, say, okay, um, pull them off to the side, say, we got to have a conversation. How many hours do you got? Set aside some time. There's a lot you need to learn about that animal. There's a lot you need to be prepared for. And work with them. If you don't have time to, pass them off to somebody that does. Refer them to somebody that's got time. You know, answer what questions that you can when they come up. And try not to be judgmental and encourage people. Because when people ask questions, if you encourage them and you empower them and you give them information, they get better. The animal is better, the animal is happier, healthier, so is he. Bad things don't happen. The entire community doesn't get bad press when we work together to lift each other up and not to cut each other down and separate ourselves. This is very, very important. I know in society today, with the polarization, everybody wants to be right. Nobody wants to be wrong, whether they are or not, and everybody wants to fight about shit. Um, we've got to grow past that. And I think the reptile community is really a good example of how people can work together, help each other out, and, um, and everybody benefits from it. So those are the things that we can do, that we can really focus on to help avoid things like this. Again, you know, once this stuff hits the news, we've got to start paying attention to USARC. Go to USARC.org. They put up alerts anytime anything's going on. I go over them every Saturday on my live stream. Um, if anything new comes up, I mention it, encourage everybody to get their membership, uh, and I'm always open to questions if anybody has any questions about U.S. ARC, what they do, how they do it. Um, if you've got any questions that I can't answer, I've got a direct line to the president, Phil Goss, and if I call him, I am quite certain he'll be more than happy to answer any questions that I don't have the answer to, so I can pass it along to you. Um, and it's instances just like this that make U.S. ARC so important to us. Um, if this happens and somebody tries to pass a ban or an un unreasonable restriction, they find it, they let us know, we can take action to protect ourselves. Uh, very, very important, guys. Um, and the numbers really do matter. Um, the more people that are behind them, the more effective they are. So those are the people that are fighting for us. Now, I think that's, you know, for the most part, I want to sit here and just go off for an hour pontificating bumping my gums uh, but I think there's a couple important points here that really need to be driven home about kind of holding each other accountable um, cooperating helping to educate people and if you're one of those people who has a really big ego and you know you're running around with an 18 foot snake on your shoulders telling everybody what a badass you are and nobody else can do it um, just to feed your ego and, and have some kind of an identity as a snake wrangler, um, yeah, maybe you're in it for the wrong reasons. Because um, I've got news for you. Uh, you're not special. Um, I've seen little 100-pound females work with 20-foot snakes before. Um, it can be done. And I've also seen really big guys made completely helpless by really big snakes before. So that can happen too. So... We, we do have to kind of evaluate the reasons why we're in this stuff. We either love the animals, we love interacting with them, we love helping people in the community. Um, if we're just in it to blow our own ego up out of the water and show off, 
um, until we finally get bit by the most venomous snake on the planet. Uh, maybe it's time to take up a different hobby. Uh, basket weaving, something like that. Uh, making maple syrup, that's pretty safe. But, uh, you know, maybe snakes isn't your thing if that's your approach. But um, anyway, guys, hope you all have an outstanding rest of the day. Uh, again, guys, please get subscribed to the channel. Get down and like the video. Push it out. This is a message I'd like to see everybody in the community get. Um, it's, it's a message we all need to hear. You know, it's a discussion we need to have. And um, again, tomorrow night, Saturday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, the live stream. I'll talk about everything else that's going on there on the live stream. So if you jump in there, you won't miss anything. If you get subscribed, you won't miss a live stream. See how this works? It's a wonderful little circle. <laughs> You guys have an outstanding day, and we'll see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.